All right, Jim, we are live and back on the Dart language samples. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well this Saturday morning. How are you? Good. It's uh, yeah, it's going to be a hot day. So only uh, an inside day or early morning, late evening kind of day. Glad to be uh, inside. Yeah. So we've been going through these uh, Dart language samples. The last one we have is comments. And, and today we want to talk about imports. Um, importing a library or a package is, um, it, it's, it's tripped me up before because I don't necessarily know what always to like type. So in, in your mind, what, what is an import and why, why do we need these? When it comes to these languages, we're trying to create applications, right? When it comes to these applications, you could write all your code within a single file without using any external uh, uh, libraries or packages to help you out with your code. But that's, that can at times be very inefficient. That's why you pull in these external libraries and dependencies with code that folks have already written to incorporate into your code um, because you don't want to reinvent the wheel. And you import those literally with the import statement. Okay. Um, I've seen in React, and, and I think this is just a JavaScript feature, that when you define a class, at the bottom of the class, you have an export statement. Um, what, what's the deal with exports there? And do we have to export in Dart? Um, how does that work? I'm not sure if uh, exporting is necessary in Dart. Okay. I don't think I've seen the export keyword in Dart. I may be that, wrong, but I, is, I have not seen that. Is that because it's compiled? Like it's different than React in that sense and, and then JavaScript? JavaScript, my understanding is an interpreted language compared to um, Dart, which is compiled. Okay. That could make a difference. I don't want to assume anything though. Okay, let's do a quick Google and um, export. Okay. Yeah, let's find out. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm just skimming these, but it looks like you can export a Dart file. Do we need to packages? Yeah, I'm not immediately seeing something about the, the export. You know, it may be a little too in-depth for just this language sample section. So maybe we'll, we'll gloss over that. Um, yeah, I, I think you're right. In my experience, um, I've never had to export any of my own code uh, for another file to be able to to see and use that code. Um, it could be the case in, 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 a, um, in an actual package, like say you get something from pub.dev, maybe they export something. So maybe they have to uh, do exporting because they're a third party package. For example, let's go check out auto root. This is one I've been using lately. I'm gonna go to the GitHub repo and search for export in this repository. Okay, and so it looks like, um, looks like packages are a little different than a regular like Flutter or Dart application. Um, Interesting. Yeah, because he has the library declaration and also has all these export statements. So that's, um, yeah, that is interesting. So maybe, maybe at, a, at a package level you do, but when it comes to your own compiled program, because everything's kind of in the same project space, for example, if I go over to Android Studio, this is a little counter with provider example. We have um, 
do, 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 do. Yeah, all of these are external packages, but my home page is, is uh, my app knows about that right here. And so I needed to import that uh, right here, my home page. Uh, package Flutter provider counter. So because it's all like encapsulated in its own project, I don't think we have to export. So in my mind, exporting is really only necessary when you're going outside. Like if somebody wanted to use this application, Flutter provider counter here, I would need to then export all this code so that they could then import it just like material.dart or something. Interesting. So that could seems be like case. it. Yeah. Okay, so let's, um, we're annotating the doc. So let, let's read these in case somebody trips up over this language. To access APIs defined in other libraries, use import. Okay, so when I was a beginner, Jim, I, I really didn't understand APIs. I don't know if it's my aversion to acronyms, but um, there's two ways I've seen the word APIs used in programming. One is like, I wanna go get some weather data or some tweets from Twitter and bring them into my program or put them on my website. So I need to know what methods to call on those systems. That's the application programming interface that I was first introduced to. And then I noticed that- They call them RESTful APIs. Yeah, the RESTful API, that's right. You're, you know, create, update, uh, all that. But then they, in programming, this term API is referred to in the, programming language sense um, to use uh, to use like like it, it's almost like this dart math library this core library they're treating it the same way as like a twitter or some external third party like twilio or maybe some weather data or uh, location data that i need to query and use that services api is that is that how you understand it as well or not my understanding when it comes to application programming interfaces, regardless if they're RESTful, like used on the web or just using it within a package, is that when we're using an external third-party package like DartMath, the people who wrote DartMath allows us, the users, um, this quote-unquote interface to use their library. And how we use the Dart math library, for example, is by calling its public methods and then passing in uh, arguments to those methods. Mm -hmm. That's my okay. understanding about uh, APIs just in general. Okay. Yeah. So if we want to use the classes and the methods that are defined in Dart math, that's what they're wrapping up into this, this concept called the API. Correct. That's the program. Now, if you use this general concept and apply it to RESTful web APIs, it's essentially the same thing. You create mm -hmm. a RESTful web API and how folks interact with your web API is through the HTTP uh, protocol and the various methods associated. Get, delete, create, put, patch, post, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, and so on. Okay. Nice. All right, so cool, cool, cool. So we use the import statement. I don't know in Dartpad if we're able to import things. It looks like it recognizes that. Um, the one thing that trips me up when I'm typing out imports is not putting the semicolon. So for example, let me show you in, in Android Studio, I typically don't type them out. So like if I get rid of my homepage uh, thing right there, I get this red line and then I option enter and I import it, right? I can do the fully qualified name or the short name, the relative one. So that's how I typically do, do imports. Um, I seldom type them out. Like if I wanted this, my home page thing here and I wanted to type it out myself. Okay, so I get that red squiggly line again, import. And sometimes it's this, my IDE is too slow and I get to this point and I haven't seen the suggestion. So that's kind of a downside sometimes. So you have to wait for it and then tab. That way you get that semicolon because if you don't, uh, bad things happen. <laughs> but then in here, I don't necessarily know what to, like 
Um, like I, I obviously have this example here. So I guess it always just starts with package and then it will start suggesting things. So that's, that's probably my hint to people is when they're, if they're gonna be typing in their own imports is to start with package like this and then they can go to different libraries that the IDE knows about. Um, so this one is gonna be package colon, the name of my app, Flutter Provider Counter. Okay, there it is, I can tab, and now I have access. Let's see if I see. Okay, so if I stop there, now I can see all my things. Um, my homepage. Maybe it's not there, it's in pages. Okay, so you don't have insight totally into it. Again, I don't know what to type here to see like what's available. So maybe I stopped there and just give it a letter until I see something. I don't know. All right, so that's one way to do it. The IntelliSense for Android Studio is not perfect. Yeah. But it's probably, good enough. Yeah, probably better to use the, the squiggly lines and uh, do the import. Uh, so you could do something like that, import dart math. Okay. And now it's saying, hey, we're not using it probably, right? Unused import, dart math. So we would wanna say something like, I think there's a random class. I don't know how it's used, but now we're, we're apparently using it. Hey, there it goes, instance of JS random. Okay, so we're just calling an empty in, instance of random. Yeah, it looks like you give it a uh, an integer like that. Okay, uh, maybe not actually. Okay, I don't have time to go into the library docs, but it's used somehow. <laughs> and the imports do work as long as Dartpad, I think knows about it. Um, you'll notice we don't have a pub spec here. So we're only importing like Dart or, or Flutter. If you do, when you say new pad, if, if you say um, do a Flutter one, then maybe you have access to all the, the native Flutter um, libraries. Uh, but we couldn't, for instance, import auto root into here because we don't have a pub spec .lock or .yaml. Looking at the documentation here, mm -hmm. the comments here are very important. Um, for example, the first line, import dart colon math we're importing core libraries. Mm -hmm. My belief is a core library to Dart or to Flutter, you prefix it with the word Dart or Flutter. Mm -hmm. Okay. The second line, import package test, test.dart, importing libraries from external packages. Perhaps in this sense, we're not dealing with the core Flutter slash Dart libraries. We're using some other external library Hence, that's why we prefix it with package. Like auto root or test mm -hmm. in this example, yeah. Third line, import path to my other file dot dart. Well, mm -hmm. this makes perfect sense because we're just dealing with our file within our own application. So the code is smart enough to automatically detect that if the project is set up properly. Mm -hmm. And again, this is the, the relative path. Mm -hmm. All right. So if I show that very straightforward, get, get rid of, well, it, it's also straightforward because we're used to it. Um, this wasn't so straightforward to me when I was learning. Sometimes I'm still dumb. So, <laughs> so if, I, if we reorganize our files at a later point in time, um, this might not be the same path. You know what I mean? Um, it might not live in pages. We might decide to nest it further into a, a home directory or something within pages. Um, so the fully qualified path, I like that because it's, it's it, if it changes, like this will all of a sudden be incorrect and you can update it. Um, anyways, cool. Um, what else? There is, this is different than extending a class um, or mixing in a class. Uh, 
Like if I go to, you good on time, Jim? I am for about another 15 minutes. Okay, I wanna, I wanna just see, it's, okay, so here's Dart Match from pub.dev. They're saying, this is how you import it. Um, for instance, like if we wanted um, some functions that aren't like the plus sign that you get automatically from, okay, so here's, here's <laughs> let me interrupt real quick. Implementing core libraries or importing core libraries. So, uh, for example, like Dart Math, I would think I, I could just use um, something like this, the square root. Um, well, actually, that's a that's a constant. Uh, maybe something like minimum, but we don't we don't get this out of like they say out of the box with regular Dart. Um, it doesn't know about that, and we have to import it. So even though they're saying it's a core library, it's core to Dart. Okay, it's still in my mind, it's it's still an, an external package. It's just nested in the Dart ecosystem, if you will. Um, so that's the difference. That's the difference in, in, in my mind, like what a core thing is or not. In Ruby, Ruby's interesting. Um, so, so so Ruby has a standard a standard library, um, but they also have a core library, which is is, is also kind of confusing. So in my mind, the Ruby core library is everything you get for free from Ruby. You know what I mean? Um, just like in Dart, you get maps, you get lists, you get integers. That, that's all part of it. You don't have to import anything to use those besides Dart itself. So the standard library in Ruby is more like what they're calling here the core library. It's still part of the programming language, but it's not included for free uh, automatically. There's a reason for that. They don't want your project to be bloated with these uh, extra classes of functionality if you don't necessarily need them. Mm -hmm. Is that because it takes a like memory in the, in the ultimately compiled program? Correct. Your application ultimately is compiled and the more imports you have, the more ability to use those classes, the larger the compilation. Okay, okay. And because we're dealing sometimes, I guess, in the Flutter world with mobile apps and you have to support all different kinds of devices, the less memory, the more optimized we can be, the better. Whereas maybe in, in the Ruby world, if I spin up a server, you know, Ruby on Rails server, and I have some extra code in my gem file that I'm not using, it's really not hurting because I've got a big server, you know, big web server to serve all the traffic. Even if it does initialize those, um, those constants um, and those classes in, in Ruby. So, okay, so that, that's good to know. Thanks for pointing that out, Jim. Um, so here's this random thing. I kind of wanted to see this in GitHub. Is this the button? Yes. Okay. So random is defined here in the Dart SDK within the math library. It looks like here's in this lib folder, here's all the different kinds of things you can import. Um, I thought we got async for free, but maybe you don't. Maybe you get it for free in Flutter, but not in Dart itself. Um, okay. So there's libraries. So if we really wanted, see this, okay, so this, if we wanted something like this, this constant E, we would normally have to just like copy and paste that into our code, right, to get that. Otherwise, we need to import dark math. And then we and then we'd be able to use it. Um, I wonder if it detects that it's like that's print e here, that a thing. Can't just print something when it loads. How about here? Print and then return. Okay. 
So I've, I had it defined there. If I get rid of it, I've imported Dart. And I think it should still be good if I command B here. It's going to take me to that math library to where it's defined. Okay. So in my mind, importing something is kind of like copying, pasting all the code directly into your file. Is that a fair way to say that? Or is that oversimplifying it? No, that's fair. That's fair. Okay. Cool, cool. All right. Read more about libraries and visibility in Dart, library prefixes like show, hide, lazy loading through the deferred keyword. Okay, so it, it can even get into more depth, but I feel like we've covered that pretty good and, and we, we did more justice to it, um, providing background and, and examples in other programming languages like React and Ruby to give people a sense for like, um, um, you know, how and why the, uh, we import things in a programming language. We did. Any, uh, any final thoughts, Jim? Very fundamental concept that applies to pretty much every single language out there. Mm -hmm. Importing packages. Now, the keyword may not necessarily be import for these languages, but the concept mm. is the same. Whether you're using the import keyword, using or with or whichever other quote unquote import uh, keyword for that particular language. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess one more note on that. There is a difference um, like in, in Ruby, I think the word for import is require. Um, and then that kind of like brings it into your program but it's, you still not may, may be able to access the code unless you include it in your class. So Ruby has a, a require and an include, whereas in Dart, I think that is more like import. And then if you wanted to, um, you can either extend a class or you could then um, mix in using the with keyword. Okay. So yeah, cool. I think we've done that justice. I think so too. Awesome, dude. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining. We'll catch you next time. See you next time, everyone. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Aaron.